Chinese government is running out of money, thanks to a weak economy and a horrible COVID policy. Now, China is desperate for foreign investment. Welcome to China Uncensored. I'm Chris Chappell. This episode is sponsored by MOBA Globes. These are really amazing globes. They spin on their own without cords or batteries. And whether you get this blue and gold model or one of the other great world map designs, you can appreciate the beauty of our planet. And MOBA Globes are not made in China, which is good because China is in a bad situation right now. The government is running out of money. Over the past few years, China has been fueling itself with debt. We've seen that in the recent housing crisis, where, of course, China's solution is to issue even more debt. That's like being buried alive, and your solution is to dig down through the center of the earth. If we keep getting buried deeper, eventually we'll pop out the other side. The Communist Party drove China even further into debt when it shut down its economy under its zero COVID policy. They spent billions on mass testing, quarantine camps, and disinfection. This has just added to the trillions of dollars of debt that local governments are already struggling under. And guess what? The central government has more or less told local governments that it's not going to bail them out. That's going to cause a lot of problems. So they're deep in debt, but still wasting tons of money. You know, it's bad enough CCP officials are oppressive, authoritarian, genocidal maniacs. But also running themselves into debt like millennials? That's going too far. And like millennials, spending habits, it was a total waste. Because the Chinese Communist Party realized it needed to get the economy running again, so they opened up without preparing the population to live with COVID. There are a lot of other things that are wrecking China's economy right now. These include crackdowns on Chinese tech companies, massive unemployment, a shrinking population, and buying too much Starbucks and avocado toast, just like millennials. The CCP also put itself in a more hostile international political environment, thanks to aggressive wolf warrior diplomacy, the crackdown in Hong Kong, and continued support for Russia. As a result, China's role in global manufacturing is under pressure. Foreign companies are starting to move out, especially now that the U.S. is imposing tighter sanctions to prevent China's access to critical technology like microchips. China is now desperate for money, and it shows. Like how they've resorted to using generic concentration camps instead of name brand. Chinese leader Xi Jinping has made it imperative that China beats the U.S. with its own domestically produced semiconductor chips. This is something the Communist Party has been spending money on for almost a decade. The party has already pumped billions into developing China's own semiconductor industry. It was reported that Chinese officials had planned to spend billions more in the face of U.S. curbs. But now, China has to hit pause on their giant chip spending spree. You know something's wrong if a years-long project as important as microchip production is being paused. That would be like seeing Ash Ketchum sell his Pikachu. Oh dang, he really must be broke. Another sign of Chinese desperation is the CCP easing off its tech crackdown, because the crackdown was hurting economic growth. According to Chinese financial regulator Guo Shuqing, the crackdown on tech companies is basically over. He said, we'll encourage them to come out strong in leading economic growth, creating more jobs, and competing globally. In fact, China's leading Communist Party business chamber pledged to draw the sword against malicious rumors targeting private businesses. But considering how broke they are, instead of using an actual sword, they're probably just going to literally draw a sword. So given all the financial challenges China is facing, what else can the CCP do? Well, they have one very important message for the Western world. Now is the time to invest in China. And many of the global elite are actually falling for it. More after the break. Welcome back. China is deeper into debt while generating less money even after opening up from zero COVID. China is broker than a philosophy major who's trying to pay back his student loan debt by playing polka covers of Nickelback on a street corner. China needs more money. 
which is why Xi Jinping wants to reset the economy and win back friends. And what better place to win friends than in Davos? Xi Jinping sent Vice Premier Liu He to the World Economic Forum in Davos, Switzerland. His role was to tell the world that China is ready to rejoin the international economic order. Which is kind of like if Prince Harry said he was ready to rejoin the royal family. What? Did you already blow through your book deal money? During his speech, Liu He mentioned how China has the COVID outbreak and the housing crisis totally under control. He said, if we work hard enough, we are confident that growth will most likely return to its normal trend, and the Chinese economy will see a significant improvement in 2023. Here's footage of his speech. Whoops, here it is. Opening up as a basic state policy is a catalyst of reform and development in China and a key driver of economic progress. China's door to the outside world will only open wider. Look, China's open, and its economy will definitely improve, so obviously now is the time to buy, buy, buy. And you thought I was joking when I put up this meme. And to show that no one has anything to fear, China's regulators are giving huge concessions to big foreign investment firms. They granted JP Morgan approval to take full ownership of its China mutual fund venture and also gave Standard Chartered approval to set up a fully owned securities brokerage. And just before that, they gave investment management firms like Fidelity International and Neuberger Berman approval to set up mutual funds in China. And now Fidelity is suggesting this year will bring a change in Chinese fortunes. After all, China matters. At least making money in China matters. Sounds like a crackerjack investment. And that comes alongside media reports that U.S.-China decoupling would be catastrophic for the global economy. So what are you waiting for? Buy! Buy while the price is low! It'll be your best investment yet. Definitely better than all those other times you invested in China before and lost money, which hopefully you've already forgotten about. And China is making political reforms, too. Like by allowing Marvel superhero films to release in Chinese theaters again. Wakanda forever! See, we're totally cool. It's definitely not because we're desperate for money. The Chinese Communist Party is trying to smooth out relations with the U.S. to get the resources it needs. This includes preparing for visits from the U.S. Treasury and the Secretary of State, and also having a Chinese diplomat give a New Year's greeting on the Jumbotron at a basketball match in Washington, D.C. This has big, how do you do, fellow capitalists, energy. Of course, it doesn't mean China has actually done away with wolf warrior diplomacy. It's just a shift to look somewhat less of a bully. For now. The Chinese Communist Party is also looking at getting money from Europe. China's top diplomat, Wang Yi, plans to visit the Munich Security Conference in Germany and visit the EU headquarters in Belgium. In the meantime, Chinese officials and diplomats are highlighting recent transatlantic disputes to try and persuade the Europeans that the U.S., especially after Trump, remains an untrustworthy ally, and that they should actually invest in China, because the CCP is so much more trustworthy. This is like Jamie Lannister calling Luke Skywalker a sister lover. People who live in glass houses probably shouldn't be doing certain things with their sister since everyone can see you. Chinese diplomats have also sought to downplay China's ties with Russia. Chinese ambassador to the EU, Fu Tsong, said people should not read too much into such labels as no limits, adding that Beijing could describe relations with the EU in the same terms. So they want to be in an open relationship while saying they don't want to use labels. Man, they really are just like millennials. Several officials who met with Fu said he was very keen to see how to revive the stalled ratification process over the EU-China Comprehensive Agreement on Investment. That deal was pushed by former German Chancellor Angela Merkel in 2020. At the time, it was described as the most ambitious agreement that China has ever concluded with a third country. But the deal fell apart in 2021 after the EU sanctioned Chinese officials for their role in internment camps in Xinjiang. And China slapped back with their own sanctions. But don't worry, that's just China having no limits with Europe. They also obviously have no limits on how low they'll go not just because they're still trying to dig themselves out of debt. 
My favorite Chinese state-run media, the Global Times, says the EU-China deal will provide a substantial boost to the European economy, creating jobs and profits. Whereas decoupling from China amounts to economic suicide for Europe. And hey, since the EU is so big on green energy, why not start off a new era of shared, clean energy leadership with China? Just ignore the ethnic slave labor that goes into China's green energy program. Now, on some level, the EU recognizes that the CCP is a threat, and that the CCP is just trying to charm them. But the EU still wants to make money from China. So it's attempting to play a balancing game by emphasizing de-risking as opposed to complete decoupling from China. But as I've been warning for more than 10 years now, as long as any country keeps looking to work and trade with China, there's always going to be a huge risk. Giving the CCP what they want now will only continue to show them they can get away with whatever they want with just enough charm. And by charm, I mean lying. Wakanda forever? More like charm than coerce forever. And this episode has been sponsored by Mova Globes. I've talked about Mova Globes before. I love the technology. It spins automatically, powered by ambient sunlight. And when you pick it up, it keeps spinning. And when you put it back on its base, it will correct its motion. Mova has dozens of other cool designs, too. Plus, they're made in Taiwan. And Mova Globes has a special offer for China Uncensored fans. Apply our special code China Uncensored at checkout for extra savings. So click the link in the description below and pick your favorite version. And when you buy a Mova Globe, you'll also be supporting your favorite show about China. So click below to check out Mova Globes and use the code China Uncensored. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time.